I'm going to start by asking a question. What do you think is the hungriest thing in this world? Any guesses? The hungriest thing in this world. When you think of something that's hungry, what do you think of? A teenage boy. <laughs> that's, that's one of the things I have written down here. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> I've got, lion is another thing. Um, Maybe you've seen a television show with a shark attacking something. You might think that's something that's really hungry, or a lion chasing something down. Um, teenage boys I have on here, obviously. Um, <clears throat> we've all seen pictures of children in third, third world countries starving. Um, you might think they're the hungriest thing in this world. I think the Bible teaches us that the most hungry and thirsty thing in this world is our souls. The thing most in need of nourishment is our souls. Um, if you can turn to Isaiah 55, chapter 1, or verse 1. <clears throat> and I'm going to read <clears throat> verse 1 through 3. <coughs> Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that, eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. What should we hunger and thirst for? Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. In Isaiah 55, who are the thirsty? <clears throat> it's all of us. All our souls are thirsty. Verse 1 says, Come three times. Come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, c buy wine and milk without price. Where are we to come? <clears throat> it says we're to come to the waters. We know that the source of living water is Christ. If you can turn to um, John 4.14. 4, John 4.14 says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. <clears throat> We're told to come buy something with no money. This doesn't make any sense. And when I was going over this last night, Gabe said, that doesn't make sense. How can you buy something without money? <clears throat> somebody, had to, somebody had to make the purchase for us. <clears throat> to buy something, you have to have money. Imagine going to a store, you pick up a shirt, and you take it to the register, and you try to buy it. What are they going to say? No, you, you can't have this shirt. You have to have money to buy the shirt. It just wouldn't work. So how are we able to buy and eat without money and without price? Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. <coughs> this may be a bad example, but... Someone has gone into the store before us and already bought the shirt and paid for it. Jesus paid it all for us. Amen. Verse 2 talks about how we're wasting our lives living for ourselves and not for what truly satisfies. Verse 2 in Isaiah 55 says, Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisf satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and ye that and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Think of the prodigal son. He got all his money and he spent it on what he thought was going to bring him pleasure. It didn't. In the end, he was miserable. We've all thought at one time that our sin was going to satisfy us. There's nothing in this world, there never was anything, and there will never be anything that will satisfy us other than Christ. His living water is the only thing that can meet our needs. Imagine you're running a long race and it's 90 degrees out. It's the first time you've run a race and you didn't bring a water bottle, you don't have anything to drink. 
about five miles in, you're sweating profusely, your mouth is dry, and all you can think of is you need something to drink. Finally, about five minutes later, you see that there's an aid station. There's a table full of cups of free water, Gatorade, and anything else you can think of to satisfy your thirst. However, two tables over, there's a table with cups full of sand and cups full of sawdust, and a man charging $2 for each cup, claiming that this is what you really need to satisfy your thirst. Are you really going to pay for cups of sand and sawdust? This is what we're doing when we're not seeking Christ and his righteousness, when we're following the desires of our flesh rather than what our souls truly thirst for. No, we're not going to go and buy cups of sawdust. We're going to get the free cups of water and the free cups of Gatorade and drink them down as fast as we can. <clears throat> this is how we need to desire and thirst for God. We need to desire him more than anything. We need to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. We need to drink from the spring that gives eternal life. We need to stop working for the sand and the sawdust that this world gives us that doesn't satisfy. If you can turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Matthew six nineteen through 21 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We can't live physically without eating and drinking water. And even more importantly, we can't live spiritually without the living water and the bread of life. Mm -hmm.